Harper. Next, uh, Senator Ossoff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to uh, the, the panel. General, thank you for your service. In response to Senator King a moment ago, he noted your testimony from earlier today that you had seen the requisite authorities granted for the D.C. Guard in a matter of minutes in the past. In this case, it took over three hours. And you stated you believed it was a combination of political concerns and optical concerns that led to that delay. Can you please break down which concerns you believe were political, which you believe were optical, and what's the basis for your assessment that the three-hour delay was a function of political and optical concerns? Well, I don't think it was so much political. It was, let me focus on the optics, because that's what I heard, uh, the word optics and the word that having uniform presence at the Capitol could inflame the protesters. That, that's what I can And who made that statement? So that was senior leaders in the United States Army, General Pyatt, um, General um, Flynn, and others. Uh, they got back to me saying, and, they, and that was on the phone call with District of Columbia senior leaders, that it wouldn't be in their best it wouldn't be their best military advice to send uniformed guardsmen to the Capitol because they didn't like the optics, and they had also said that they thought it could inflame what they wanted to do was send guardsmen to relieve police officers in the city so more policemen could get to the Capitol. That was the call at 2.30 p.m. following the chief's call to you. Is that correct, General? Yes, sir. And you conveyed to those on that call who included the mayor of the District of Columbia, the Secretary of the Army, the acting Secretary of Defense, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the fact that the U.S. Capitol Police Chief's tone had been, as you describe in your testimony, frantic, that he had informed you at 1.49 p.m. that the security perimeter of the Capitol had been breached by hostile rioters, that the joint session of Congress had been interrupted, that the Vice President was still on the premises? No, I, I, I never said all that. What, what, I, what I relayed, and it wasn't to the Chairman, what I relayed to the Army leadership was the call that, that uh, Chief Sun had with me at, a, at um, 1349 at 149 and it, it was an urgent plea and his voice was cracking and he was serious he needed help right then and there every available guardsman at the 232 call that's when the deputy mayor was on the call the uh, director of homeland security acting chief conti chief son and others to include the chief of the United States Secret Service Uniform Division was on that call as well. So we dialed in, trying to get the Secretary of the Army on the call, but he wasn't available. So Army, uh, the G3 for the Army, General Flynn joined the call, and uh, the Director of the Army Staff, General Pyatt, joined the call, and there were others on the call as well. And Thank during you. that call, Chief Sun pleaded to have National Guard support at the Capitol immediately. That was reinforced by Chief Conti. We need them there right now. The Capitol will be breached. Thank you for the clarification, General. I uh, appreciate that. Mr. Salesis, between 2.30 p.m. and 4.32 p.m., what were the internal deliberations of the Department of Defense to determine whether or not to grant the request? Uh, Senator, there was discussion. Secretary McCarthy, who was the Secretary of the Army at the time, uh, asked and what was the National Guard going to do on the Capitol. Specifically, he wanted Could to Could you know, get a little closer to the microphone, please? Sure. Thank you. Secretary McCarthy wanted to understand exactly how the National Guard was going to be employed coming to the Capitol. Obviously, the environment, because they had heard the gunshots had been fired, there was explosives, obviously pretty dynamic environment. So what he was trying to understand was what was the National Guard going to do when they came up here? Were they going to be asked to go into the building and clear the building? Were they going to be part of the outside perimeter? He was trying to understand that. He went as far as going to the Metro Police Department at, 16, at 410 to sit down with them and make a clear understanding of how they were going to be employed. After that meeting at 410, 
He went back to the Acting Secretary of Defense, and at 432, he approved the deployment of the National Guard. Thank you. And he was aware, was he not, while he was conducting this analysis, that the nature of the Chief's request, as relayed through the General, had been frantic, uh, that the perimeter of the Capitol had already been breached, that members of Congress' lives were at risk, that the Vice President's life was at risk? I would assume he knew that, Senator. He was aware of that during that time. Thank you so much. I, I do have to reflect for a moment that ultimately responsibility for securing this complex falls to the United States Congress, which is responsible for these premises. I was dispirited speaking with the former chief in our last hearing when he described that there was no individual responsible for the security of the United States Capitol, that an urgent request for support from the Guard required concurrence with the two sergeants at arms, an unwieldy command structure, and then there was an unwieldy command structure imposed within the executive branch as well. General, based upon your military experience, is there any reason why the United States Capitol Police could not generate the capabilities to independently provide the kind of quick reaction force that the troops under your command would have so that this institution, the United States Congress, is not dependent upon swift decision-making by the Secretary of the Army or concurrence between civilian and military leadership when the lives of members of Congress and the Vice President are at risk? Well, well yes, sir, uh, Senator. The, the United States Capitol Police could develop that capability. I mean, they, they, they certainly could. Uh, Thank you, General. And, 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 a, and a final question for you. Uh, had you conducted any exercises that included simulations of civilian military deci joint decision making, simulations of command decisions involving contingencies that threatened the functioning of the U.S. Congress, the lives of members of Congress, joint sessions of Congress, outside of the context of specific preparations for specific national special security events? No, sir. Might we, exercises such as those have improved the well, capacity of the overall command to respond to an event like this? Well, we were prepared to, to come to the Capitol and, and help the United States Capitol, Capitol Police secure the Capitol. We, here's what we do. We practice and rehearse civil disturbance. I think we're well exercised in that uh, capability. It, it is a mandate that, that all National Guard practices civil disturbance. We're equipped for it, we train for it, and we're prepared to do it when called upon. So if we would have, we'd have been approved to do it, we would have got there and helped the United States Capitol Police. Understood, General. And I have no doubt that the forces under your command were appropriately trained and qualified. My question is whether and equipped. any and equipped. My question is whether any exercises have been undertaken that simulated the command decisions that would need to be made, the requests that you would need to make, for example, at the secretary level, uh, in order to allow your troops, which were uh, properly trained and equipped and had those capabilities, well, to Senator, they're already move. they're already there. That's a process that's well rehearsed, well practiced. We do it most of all with the, with the Metropolitan Police Department. They're our primary customer. But if you recall, when the monuments were attacked in the summer, the Department of Interior, on behalf of the United States Park Police, exercised that same request. The, the Secretary of Defense authorized the, the District of Columbia National Guard to re respond to monuments in the city and help the Park Police protect those monuments. Thank it was you, General. the same process. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator.